we are going to make gnomes today. Yes. Super simple pocket gnomes. We actually have a pocket gnome tutorial that we filmed with our friend Debbie Diener. Debbie. But um, we did not have a supply pack to go with it. And so we wanted to create a simple, um, inexpensive beginner supply pack. It's a fun way to get started, has everything you need. We went traditional with, with red and blue and, and white locks. This is what the supply pack looks like. It's just a nice little ditty. <laughs> and you need minimal supplies, just the, um, you will need felting needles, sorry my, my arm is right in front of your face, and a felting surface. We sell the stab at Wabbit, felting surface. I do use a Zoli tool at times in this tutorial, which if you're just getting started you will see how, but you can use, um, we'll use a skewer today probably because people either have access to a skewer or a knitting needle anything kind of long and skinny uh, like this. And the Zoli tool, if you don't have it, you can use a pencil. Um, but I'll show ways to do the gnome without that tool at all and with the tool. We would like to, um, just wanted to show a few different color options where there's just endless amounts of colors, which is part of the reason that we didn't do a supply pack in the first place between the hat the, the little shirt, the face, the locks, um, the potential is just crazy. So there are, um, how many top coat colors? Like 40? There are 40. Yeah. And so we have them in a, a sampler bag. That's like the whopping bag with all a section of all of the colors in it. Or we have samplers, um, um, groups clustered by color. That um, is a good way just to start if you do want some different colors, increasing your, your supply of what you have there. Like I said, this pipe pack is going to be blue and red. And follow up with the gnome tutorial. What's it called on the website? I don't believe it's called. Uh, I believe it's pocket gnome. It is pocket gnome? Uh, I think. It should okay. be. If it's not, I'll make it. Okay. There is just, no, there is a second tutorial that gets a little more involved with shades of the hats. Um, um, shapes of the hats, just a lot of like ombres and all different kinds of possibilities. So we will get started. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Okay. You ready, Milo? I am. Excellent. I am as well. The supply pack has lovely locks, which you're just going to set aside. The supply pack will make about three. Um, about three gnomes, give or take. Gray core, it's just a little bit more um, neutral than the off-white to work the red and blue into. And then you have a bundle that has, oh, there's a toothpick in here, be careful. Bundles, our bundles are usually belted, so all the fiber gets wrapped around and then one piece gets tucked around like a belt and you just have to find the end and pull the belt off and then you can unwrap and you're going to have a red core um, and a red top coat so the top coat um, is brighter in color that's how you'll tell but also it's a nice long fiber it's got a really long staple the staple length is how long an individual fiber is the red core is darker and fuzzier. So it's got this kind of fuzzier kind of consistency. And the core wool is what we use to create shapes and the top coat is what we use to get the color nice and pretty the way we want it. Now, this blue core wool happens to be a beautiful color, yeah. but we did include um, a different blue top coat as well. So you have red and blue and then you have um, a flesh tone for ears and noses, thank you, and a little bit of pink for a little lip. What I would do, since we were saying this is going to make three, is go ahead and make three piles. That way, as you're working, you'll know, um, especially if you're just getting started, it can be hard to gauge um, amounts. And so, two, three, so we're going to go a little longer than that, there. 
So as you're working, you'll know, okay, I'm nearing the end of this one third. So I better make this work. So I'm just gonna split, split these things up into threes. Approximately, being very approximate, I'm sure you guys can't see me. Should be more than enough. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got three piles and I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna work with one and I'm gonna start with my core wool. And what I wanna do is take a length that's about nine to 10 inches. And to do that, I want to hold my hands about two inches apart to pull. You know, if I estimate this to be nine inches, I want to put my hands about an inch to each side to pull it apart. Pulling roving apart to a measurement is not an exact thing. It's just an approximation. If you hold your hands really close together and pull, you won't be able to, you won't be able to get it apart. So you just have to split them a little bit further. And then because this core wool is so chunky, um, to work with it, I wanna get it a little thinner. So I'm gonna split it in half. And I start with a little window in the middle and just work my way to each end. And then that piece, I'm gonna stretch. Just give it a gentle stretch. And that changes it from about nine inches to about 12 inches. It just lines the fibers up and makes it easy to wrap. I'm going to work on a skewer. You could work if you um, have a knitting needle, anything that's long and, and skinny and fairly sturdy. And I want to start by wrapping about four inches from the tip. So I'm going to start at the base. This is going to be the base of the gnome. This is going to be the hat. And what we're doing is we're going to make a cone shape on here that's going to be basically the whole structure of the gnome. This whole um, his hat, his hat and yeah. body. His yeah. whole self. His whole self. So I'm wrapping. I wrap away from myself. And I keep my core wool in a nice ribbon. Some people like to roll, so they would roll you know, twist the skewer. You could maybe do a little combo. When I get towards the tip, I've been wrapping in this direction. I want to angle back the other way. And that gives me a nice point at the tip and it also holds the wool securely, securely on there. So I was able with that one piece to go all the way up and back. And this takes a little bit of practice, this wrapping, wrapping technique. The second one, I'm gonna to wanna to go not quite as far and turn around and go back. And that way, the tip will stay pointy and the rest will get built up more. And I'm keeping my thumb and my finger in place so that it doesn't slide down and get longer that way. So this time, I wanna turn around here and go back. and I can stab that a little bit. I've got um, a 38 gauge needle here. Ooh, that one might actually be a 36. Got a lot of crunch. There we go, yeah. <laughs> and I can stab this way just to keep the butt from sliding down. Now I'm gonna take another nine inch section, split it in half lengthwise, and just keep doing the same thing. Just gotta build this up a little bit more. I feel like he could be a little longer. So when I, I'm actually gonna go up to the top this time and extend this tip a little further. I'm gonna put my second piece on. Oh, it's stretching it out so it's not too... Yeah, so it's not too chunky. It stays nice and 
And your hands are at the base so it doesn't slip down. Yeah. Very important to watch her hands. She does lots of good things with her yeah. hands. And then eventually, um, in the beginning, it's feels it all feels a little awkward, but you'll yep you'll get it. Okay, I feel like I just want. Well, I think that's good. I think that's good actually. So I have about six inches left. Um, I could I'll just put a little bit more on. I mean, you could, this is the only step that you use this gray core, so you could just keep building this until you've used all of that. But just remember, you're going for a cone. So you always want to start at the bottom and be thicker at the bottom and keep the top pointy. And we're at about, we're definitely at about four inches now. This is, these are each two inches, so. Then we slide that off. I'm going to stab back this way a little bit. Okay. It's good to get a little bit of red on the top, um, sort of two thirds, because that's where his hat is. And I could have done that while it was on the skewer, but. Um, I'm just going to do it off. It's pretty sturdy. So I'm going to take um, about a four inch piece of red core, split it in half lengthwise, and I'm just going to wrap the top half of this shape with the red. Oops, I was going to stick with a single needle since that's probably what most people have. This is a, um, a pen, it's called a pen tool, and it holds um, one to three needles. So I usually have two or three in there, and it just makes things go faster. But we'll work with a single needle. Okay. The next step is to make a base... We call it a taco. <laughs> it will make it in blue. And what it does is it, it goes around the whole base and it really gives him that triangular shape and it makes it so that he doesn't fall over because it, it, it widens out. Right now he's... Um, like a weevil. Yeah, except weevil wobbles don't fall over. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> But I loved That's those things. The whole Remember point the of tree them. house? It had and a it slide. Yeah. It was so cool. I wanted that tree house. So what we need is we want to know the circumference around our little dude. So we go like this to find out. And it's about five inches. So I'm going to pull that off. And I'm going to just pull a thin strip. This is going to go in the in the center of our taco, like the filling. Okay, we want to take about three, let's see, two to three inch pieces of blue core, and we're going to put them vertically on our felting surface. And I'm just stretching them out a little so that there's no you want to lose segmented, the segmented look. You want it to look like one broad, five inch broad by three inch piece. Then we're going to take our blue top coat and just pull lengths. This is just a good practice in core and top coat. It really doesn't change the color very much. Um, but we use these techniques in all of our tutorials. So this is a great intro to this, this technique. So now we have core on the bottom, top coat on the top. I want to flip it over so that the top coat is on the bottom. And I want to put our noodle across, right across, um, I almost the center. Yeah, well, let's just do the center and make it simple. 
Then you want to stab that in. So think of this as the filling in your taco and this as the shell and then you fold it over. And stab all of that together. I'm stabbing all over. I'm not concentrating right on the edge. I'm stabbing the whole entire area. And for this, my sanity and the ease of the video, <laughs> I'm switching to the pen tool. And you just want to lift out of your felting surface every once in a while to make sure that it's not getting too stuck in there. We like to use a core that matches the top coat because you do get some stab through when you needle felt. So you want the colors to be similar. So then I want to take my taco and I want to place it around my gnome. I want it to stick farther than the base by about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to take one edge around and tack it down. And then I'm going to take the other edge around and tack it down. Then I'm going to take all of the fringe and felt it up against the, the um, cone. And I really am going for that triangular shape. So this is his little, it's like his little tunic. It's his little body. I'm even going to set it like this and come this way into the felting surface. That really helps make it a triangle and keep him really stable. Right now I mostly see your hand. My hand. <laughs> well, I know it's a little <laughs> That that'll be good. Oh. Okay. I feel like it's a little shadowy too. It is it is when I'm looking at it. If you want to, you could take a little bit of core and plug that that bottom right up. Mm -hmm. This is all the blue is done now. So unless you're going to use a little bit as a stripe on the hat or something like that. Yeah, so I just covered that little. Okay, now I want to pick a side that's the front or the back. So I'm going to make this the front. And what we need to do before we put the hat on is make a little nose, two ears, and put the beard on. Because, because once all of this is in place, the nose, the ears, the beard, and the little lip, the hat can sit right down on it. And the hat is made as a taco, just like the blue was, except we do it in red and we make it a little bit more of a triangle shape. So to make a nose, we're gonna take, we have this about three inch section of the flesh tone core, and I'm gonna pull off about a half inch piece of it. And you can use the toothpick or your skewer. The toothpick is in your, um, in your supply pack. Shadow. I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a skewer. And you want to wrap around in one place and just make a little seed. Try not to let it get more than, much more than half an inch wide. So I have this, that's about where I want to go. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull this off. So I used about half of that strip that I had. This is about the size of a little black bean, I'd say. So I'm going to slide this off. This shape, I can either do a button nose by going side to side, in which case I really want to tuck those two sides in or I can do a long nose this way. 
I think I'm going to do a long nose. So to do a long nose before I attach it, I want to felt one side of the nose kind of in on itself. Can you see that? Yep, I can even. Yeah, I'm that. just, I'm just ta watch your fingers, but I'm just tacking one end of my little bean back in on itself and leaving the other end is still a little fringy fuzzy so that I can stick that on. So the fringy fuzzy end is really your attacher. And I'm putting the nose near the top of the blue. I want to have about an inch of blue below my nose because that's where the beard's going to go. And you can make these bigger. If you watch our other video, we make some that are like crazy tall. Um, you can make them smaller. Um, my friend Lee, um, Felting Farmer Lady Lee, has made me some very dear tiny ones. So they're really fun. Okay. There's his little nose. Now we need to make some ears. So again, I'm going to pull two um, about quarter to half inch strips. Really what I ended up doing was quartering this, um, this piece. So if you have your, this would be your second gnome, you could just pull this in half and then pull these into quarters. And that will give you a nice starting place for your nose and your ears. I'm going to show you an ear on the Zoli tool. If you have a pencil, that can work as well. You're going to stretch your strip out. And then starting right around the end of the straight um, round part of the Zoli tool, you want to go around once. Then you want to angle up onto the pointy facet and then angle back down. And then if you can, you want to do that again, just very thin, very thinly. And then when you slide that off, it naturally makes a little pointy ear. And like I said, you can do this on a pencil as well. A pencil would probably even be better for this scale known. So then you stab the pointy end of the ear until it's felted and finished. In other words, like structurally sound, but you leave this end because that's how you're going to attach it. So I'll show you another style of ear. Let me use a pencil just so you can see how it works on a pencil. I'm just going to go straight around about three or four times, say four. And then fringe out your end so that you can just make it blend seamlessly. Slide that off. And now you're going to shape this into almost like you're trying to make a little crescent. And that gives you a more kind of human ear. So the bottom I can make into an earlobe and the top I can try to make more like that. I don't know what that part of the ear is called. So you make like a little C out of it. And then that becomes your ear. So that's two different ears. Let's do another pointy one together. Just because now I'll have two of something. <laughs> well, real, real gnomes have pointy ears. Yes, the real ones do. They certainly do. So if you want to be biologically accurate. <laughs> I want my ears to leave the gnome body at the same height as the top of my nose. In other words, I want to felt it on even with um, with the top of my nose because when I put the hat on I want them to rest I want the hat to rest on those things the base of the ear is going to get covered up by some locks 
So it's okay if it's not, um, I mean, you could put some blue on there if you want to, but. So we're pretending like the blue is, you know, it's very stylized. It's his face, it's his body, it's his legs, it's everything. Because <laughs> he's just a little gnome that wants to live in your pocket. Now it's time for locks. Isn't that exciting? It is. This is a Isn't amazing. It's a quick little project. Yeah. I'm gonna look at my stash here and pick out a couple of nice strands to go down each side here, kind of like sideburns. And the locks, you're gonna you're gonna find that nice locky end, and then you're gonna work your way back to the end that is cut from the sheep. And then the cut end, you just want to fan out a little bit so that you can so that you can stab it on. And I'm just going north of the whole head and ear, nose and ear thing. And it doesn't matter that these are showing because the hat's gonna go on top of it. So once the hat is on, you're only gonna see this part that's that's sticking out. Um, I think these are Cotswold blocks that we're using mainly in our kit. But if you have, um, once you've got this down and you check our other tutorial on these, oh my gosh, the possibilities with the locks are just endless. Different lengths, different colors. Um, some are curly, some are straight. Yeah, same with the hat. I just felt like this side needed a little bit more. And I'm letting them cover up that ear. Um, I'm not doing hair all the way around. I'm letting his little red, I mean blue shirt show on the back. Then we want probably two nice sections to build up his beard. So I want to look through my locks and find a couple of good. Those are nice. Yeah, those are nice. I usually try to look, I look for the tips and then go back from the tips. And these, the first one I'm going to put on the same way I did the, um, the sideburns, I'm just going to loosen up the cut end a little bit and stab it in. This time I kind of do want to stay where the beard should be. In other words, I need room for a mustache and a lip here, so I'm not going to shoot all the way up. I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep it right there on the bottom. But I want this full length sticking off the really long. So I'm just stabbing the ends in right now. Then the second piece that I put on, let me gather it first and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. That's a good piece. I'm gonna do the same thing, just kind of organize it. Put my, my cut ends together. And then this time I'm gonna point the cut ends down and I'm going to felt this area and then I want to fold these over and then that gives me a nice fullness um, and folded edge to the top of the beard rather than you know the, the ends of the locks sticking up. So I'm just going to stab these in. I could take a tiny bit of a flesh tone and go across. It's almost like a little staple Kind of like the way we did the taco, put that across the center. Then when I fold this down, it's all getting held in there. So now he has a nice full, full yeah. beard. What? It looks good. <laughs> That's a nice beard. It is a nice on. beard. All right, let's put a tiny little lip. I've got my pink for that. You didn't. You didn't pull that. I into didn't thirds pull this yet. into thirds, but That's oh my gosh, you just need. You need so little. 
And same way we did the nose, you want to make a little seed on the um, on your toothpick. But like, look how thin this piece is that I'm working with. And this one you don't want to be any bigger than like a sunflower seed. So just a real little, tiny little seed. Slide that off. And then just shape it with your needle. Mainly concentrating on the sides as if his little lower lip is sticking out of his beard. Trying not to flatten the life out of it, so I'm coming kind of down on it so that it sort of sticks, you know, kind of sticks out a little pouty. Now we're going to put a mustache on, and that's going to work the same way. See how pretty that looks where the beard is folded and coming out from under the lip? We want the mustache to do the same thing. We want it to have a fold in the center. So one lock is going to be each side. So I'm going to find, as well as I can, two similar lock clusters. and I want the cut end to point towards the cheek, then I'm going to felt the center and fold the pretty end back. And I probably will put just a little bit of core wool, right, a little bit of flesh tone core, right where I'm stabbing, just to help hold that on, like a little, little staple. Get the nose out of the way. <laughs> so I've got my cut end over here, and I'm going to fold my pretty end over. And then stab that into a mustachey submission. It wants to pop around. You can felt it. You can felt it down. You can do whatever you want. It's your world. The gnome's just living in it. You're giving him his life. Really give him power to the people here. Mm -hmm. I have no jokes. You, you're very quiet. I, today. I know. I there's not a whole lot. We, we our beginners are going to be like, what is this lameness? <laughs> so normally we have lots of jokes, but we've done gnome stuff and we did a full size gnome. So we, and there's not a lot of gnome stuff out there. It's have, all a little dirty. We have almost as many gnome things as we have, as we have bunny things. Yes, that's because gnomes. So look and at all these locks. Great. What I could do is separate my locks into thirds, which I didn't do. Um, and then once you do that, you could see. Well, I still have this much. You could do hair if you yeah. if you wanted to, but I would. Um, I didn't do that. I would separate your locks into thirds as well. Okay, so he's all. He's got all his features and his beard, and it's so much fun. Now all we have to do is make the hat taco. And to do that, remember how we did the blue? We're gonna do it with the red, except instead of three. Three inch pieces. We're gonna do three sort of two inch pieces. This is probably a bit wide. We don't need it to be quite five inches wide. Let's do the same thing where we take our top coat, we figure out the circumference and we pull it there. Yeah, it's gonna be more like four inches. And then I'm just gonna split this in half because you just don't need quite that much. So we wanna make sure our triangle is four inches wide. If I line that up on the stab it, you can see. So I used three pieces of red core to do that, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make it um, kind of pointy by putting two pieces like that, and then one more like that. So I really tried to kind of make that triangle. 
Then we're going to put the pretty red on top. Just I put I just hold the end and pull and you get almost like it's almost like a paint stroke. Same thing. I want it to I want it to get narrower at the top. I don't want I don't want it all the way wide, all the way up because when you wrap this around, you've got to you've got to um, felt all this fiber into a point. Now this one, we're not going to fold it in half. We're just going to fold the bottom up, but we still have to flip it over carefully, preserving your piece. I'm just going to felt it a little bit to get everything to start to stick together. I feel like that's a little sticky outy, so I'm taking it off. All right, I'm putting my little noodle in there. I'm going to stab it down. I guess I'm about three quarters of an inch from the bottom. Wherever this is like all fringy, wherever you have that nice consistent four inches is where you want to put your noodle across. Do you feel like I'm being clear for the, for the I, people I think who so. are just starting? Okay, because I want to make sure that I'm um, saying everything that someone who Never did it. Felt it before. What we are saying is get yourself a pen tool because <laughs> I keep using it. It really, and then you know what? So much faster. I'll just show you. This is the punch tool, and it has five needles, and it's even better for something flat like this. So I'm stabbing all over, then I want to carefully lift it from my felting surface, turn it over. I can even stab this a little bit more. But the majority of the stabbing, once you have your your piece kind of structurally established, is going to happen onto your gnome. So when I put this on, I like to start at the nose because I want to center it because I want the seam to be in the back. And then I really kind of tuck it almost like it's drooping over his nose. Like you don't want it up here. You know, you really want it nestled down as if his little eyes sockets were there and he's getting, um, you know. Well, when you're a gnome, it is hard to find a hat that fits. They're often too big. Oh, yeah? Yep. Did you know that gnome hats are solid? Define solid. They're so the cone is solid wool. Real gnomes. Yes. <laughs> and then you're gonna take this and do the same thing, kind of like let it let it tuck over the over the ear on each side. So you're kind of getting it in place. Yeah. And then in the back, I'm looking to see which side's prettier. I think this has more of the top coat on it and it's a little longer. So that's the one I'm going to let go over. So I'm going to take one around and felt it down a little bit. And I'm really getting in there. And then I'm going to take the other around. And I try as much as possible to lose the seam. And then when you stab this, you have to stab it all over. All over. Notice how it is flat on the felting surface and she's rolling it and stabbing into it versus holding it in the air. Yeah, that doesn't do anything for you. Well, you stab yourself. And you stab yourself. I'm really, really stabbing in there. Then you can take it in your hands and kind of give them a little poof. That really gets the point nice too. Yeah. Then you might need to um, felt your little ears up a little more if they got too bent over. And then you just kind of tweak it and make him look the way you want it to look. 
I don't want him to have sad bent over ears. <laughs> so I'm stabbing them up into his hat. And then I don't want this to show, so I might put another lock. He needs another a, another lock on this side maybe, just to um just to cover some things up. Now I have to be careful to tuck it in well. Like I have to tuck it up in under the hat. That's when a single needle is yeah. Yeah. handy. Yeah. Now, when Marcia made these with me, she took some of her blue and made a stripe. You could also take your blue and make a twist all the way up. But like I said, our other um, pocket gnome tutorial has tons of lots of ideas, lots of ideas, feathers lots of in color the changes, so many. But these are oh yeah, feathers, embellishments, wire, a little bit of wire. These are so fun. They're a great little thing to give away or add to a gift. Um, they'd be great for the felt on earth giveaway which is um, oh, every spring we do a little free art giveaway called Felt on Earth. There you go. Love it.